Hello, this is Pastor Dustin. It's Sunday morning, May 17th. I'm glad you're able to join me this day as we go to the Lord and worship and as we join together in spirit to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I say, I, I know things are starting to, you know, look a little different around us. You know, we're looking to start opening up some more things here soon and you know, so we'll be starting to have some conversations about what it's going to look like for us to be able to come back together to worship the Lord again. And so we'll be looked having those conversations soon and, you know, really looking forward to, you know, seeing y'all's smiling faces again. Well, I'm glad you're able to be with me this day and let us join together in prayer this morning as we go to the Lord in worship. Gracious and almighty God, Lord, we thank you so much for this day that you have given. Lord, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we know it is a gift from you. Lord, we just pray that you would be with us during this time. Lord, let us draw close to you. Lord, into your presence before your throne to worship your holy name. Lord, help us to give all of our hearts to you this day. And Lord, help us to open our hearts to listen to what you would have to say to us. Now let everything said and done during this time be for your glory. We do pray it in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. All right. This time I'd like to invite you to join me in singing a couple praise songs to, you know, as we go before the Lord in praise and worship. Verse 1, come, now is the time to worship. Treasure in 
kind of old timey gospel songs. Just live talk with Jesus. you to think about those that on your hearts and minds this morning those who you know of who need a special touch from God this day and as we go to the Lord in prayer I invite you to lift them up and God hears all our prayers so let's go to the Lord in prayer Gracious and almighty God. Lord, we again come before you this day. And Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings. Lord, we thank you especially for your love and your grace that are new every morning. Lord, you have been so good to us. And given us so much more than we could ever hope to be worthy of. But you keep on giving. Lord, just having food on the table, Lord, being able to wake up, have a roof over our heads. Lord, simple things that we so often take for granted. Lord, make us some of the richest people in this world. Lord, even with everything that's going on right now, Lord, and we get frustrated with all that's going on in the world and Lord, we know we have you. And Lord, we have so much more than so many in this world right now. So Lord, we just thank you for all that you have given. But Lord, most especially for 
given of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world, died a horrible death, rose from the dead that we might be saved. Lord, let us never forget His sacrifice. Lord, His love, Your love. Lord, it doesn't matter who we are, it doesn't matter what we've done, how many times we've sinned against You or against others, You never stop loving us and through Christ, we can be forgiven. Lord, we know we don't deserve it. We are just sinners saved by grace and grace alone. Lord, all we got to do is accept what you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for it. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us each day, Lord, to live into your grace and into your love. Lord, to live as those who have been forgiven. Lord, to live as your children, citizens of your kingdom, here and now. Lord, it's not about doing this or doing that to make you happy. It's about growing closer to you and relationship. And Lord, as we do that, our lives will reflect you more and more. So Lord, just help us each day be better than we were yesterday. Lord, just pour your grace out on us for forgiveness, Lord, for to strengthen us, Lord, for all that we do, that it might be in your will. Guide us and direct us in all we do, Lord. We pray in Jesus' most precious and holy and glorious name. Amen. All right. I invite you to join me in one more. One more praise song. We fall down. time I invite you to hear the scripture from the book of Ephesians 
chapter 5, starting verse 21 and going into chapter 6, to verse 9. I invite you to hear these words from the Message Bible this day. Out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. Wives, understand and support your husband in, in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church. Not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in love for your wives exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silver, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to be, love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. No one is, uses his own body, does he? No, he feeds it. He pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And that is, this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery, and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church. And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself and loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Children, do what your parents tell you. This is only right. Honor your father and mother is the first commandment that has a promise attached to it, namely so that you will live well and have a long life. Fathers, don't exasperate your children by coming down hard on them. Take them by the hand and lead them in the way of the master. Servants, respectfully obey your masters, but always with an eye to obeying the real master, Christ. Don't just do what you have to do to get by, but work heartily as Christ's servants doing what God wants you to do. And work with a smile on your face, always keeping in mind that no matter who happens to be giving the orders, you're really serving God. Good work will get you good pay from the master, regardless of whether you are slave or free. Masters, it's the same with you. No abuse, please. No threats. You and your servants are both under the same master in heaven. He makes no distinction between you and them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, Last several weeks, with a little bit of break in there when, when all this this started, been looking at the book of Ephesians. You know, a great little book that you know I was reminded of recently in a Bible study, kind of a private Bible study time. And you know, there's so much good stuff in here. And it's all about living into being the kind of Christians that we ought to be. And it's not just about, you know, the list of do's and don'ts. You know, it starts out in chapter 1 by reminding us that we ought to have some joy if we are truly in Christ. You know, it, as I said before, you know, I've seen a lot of people in churches over the years who don't have any joy. You know, they might sit, they come to church and you can tell they're doing it out of duty, out of obligation. They feel like they've got to be there. You know, they might sit there. They don't really pay attention. Don't really care about what's going on. They might stand up when everybody else stands up not to draw attention to themselves. But you can tell they're not there. They don't have the heart in it. And that's not the way we ought to be. You know, at the very beginning of, the, of Ephesians, he talks about you know, us having a joy in Christ. You know, and it really comes from first understanding, you know, that we were once outsiders. We had no hope whatsoever of salvation. 
We were lost in sin. And then Jesus came along, made us insiders. And now we are sinners saved by grace. We are part of the family of God. Because of what God did through Christ. Now, we understand that. That we are nothing but dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. There's nothing good about us whatsoever except what Christ did for us. If we understand that and understand that our salvation is a free and gracious gift of God, then now we can spend eternity with Him. That ought to make us happy. That ought to give us some joy in our hearts that the world can't take away. And it ought to show. And it ought to show in the way we act and the way we live. Yeah. You know, you know, we need to be about the work that He has called us to do. I mean, if we truly have that joy here, if we truly understand what it means to be saved by grace, then it's nothing that we deserve, it's all Him, then we ought to be about sharing that with everybody we see. Remembering that there is nobody that we will ever see that God did not love, love enough to die for. Everybody that we see God thought enough of for Jesus to die on that cross. Everybody. And if we understand what it means for us to be saved, then we ought to be wanting to share that with everybody we see. We need to be about the work that He has given for us to do. It says He created each, creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join Him in the work He does, the good work He's gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. That's over in chapter 2. You know, chapter 3 reminds us that we are now part of the family. You know, we are inside. You know, and we talk about chapter 4, talking about being mature. You know, we're not supposed to stay babes in Christ. We're supposed to grow up. Just like children. You know, children are born, when they don't stay babies. They grow, and they grow fast. You know, anybody that's around children know <laughs> how fast they grow. I mean, if you miss any time with them, you come back and you see them again and you're like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> Especially when they start hitting them growth spurts. But that's the way we're supposed to be. You know, it's, it's not about us trying to figure out, okay, the Christian life is, you can't do this, you can't do that, you gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta be in church every Sunday. You know, and there are things that we shouldn't do and we're, you know, and there's things that we should do. But if we're trying to fulfill a list, we've got it wrong. And we will never succeed. It's all about growing into Christ. Growing into His love. And becoming who He would have us to be. Growing closer to His heart. Because the closer we are to His heart, the more we'll reflect His love and His grace. Yeah, that's what chapter five, first part of chapter 5 talks about the same thing. About, you know, He talks about things that we should be avoiding and then talk, I mean, it's all about loving God and loving ourselves and loving others. I mean, we really need to love the way God loves us the way God loves others. And that's a hard, that's a hard, sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's harder for us to love ourselves as it is for us to love others. But if we love ourselves, then we're going to do everything we can to be close to Him and make sure that we're forgiven, we're saved, we're whole in Him. And then this week, He goes on, He talks even more about, He talks about the relationships and this is a passage that I think can be kind of contentious. 
And I think some, some preachers might even kind of shy away from it. Especially when it starts talking about husbands and wives. Because this passage has been taken wrong so many times. I don't know how many times I've heard people talk about, well, wives are supposed to submit to their husbands. That's what Scripture says. That means they got to do what the husband says. You know, the husband says, you know, I want some more tea. she got to go get it. The husband says he's hungry. He thinks she's, he expects her to go get it and serve him like a slave. That's not what this says. I mean, it says, wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. I mean, yeah, it does say submit to their husbands, but it, wait, it, it's not, you know, husband here and wife here, they're, they're a team. We see so many men forget the next part. Because the next part says, Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. The other version says, Love your wives the way Christ loved the church. Now, what did Christ do for us? Christ laid down his life for the church. Christ did not expect the church to serve him. He came to serve. Now, that's a little bit different. You know, it's a love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that's how husbands ought to love their wives. Now, if you really take that serious, all oh, that changes a whole heck of a Changes so much. See, if we really love our wives, men, that means we're all going to be about giving to them. We're going to be about trying to build them up, not tear them down. You know, one of the things that I've seen too many times in our Western culture, it seems like there's two extremes. And what it means, you know, what people, you know, men in our culture. One is, you know, this toxic masculinity. You know, this masculinity that says, I'm the man, I'm the head of my house, and everybody in my house, including my wife, has to do what I say. The king of my castle. And they make their wives serve them like a slave. They expect them to. Expect them to be at their every beck and call. And they treat every woman they see as a slave. It's lesser than. You know, and that's one re you know, reason, you know, some men feel so inclined that they, they think they got to, you know, show their masculinity by seeing how many women they can sleep with. You know, if they have a woman, they got to put her down so she feels inferior to him. And that is not what this says. And so many of them will use this as try to use, when, why I submit to your husbands, they'll try to use that as justification. But they don't take the rest of it. Because that's one extreme that we've seen. Now, there's also been another extreme where, you know, because of this extreme time, you know, maybe that some men are have kind of gone the other direction and they, you know, they just kind of, they, you know, they're very laissez-faire in their household. They don't really care. I mean, they, they're there, 
You know, as long as they're, you know, as long as they're okay, you know, and there's peace in the house, they don't really step up and take the leadership role they're supposed to take. You know, they, you know, they submit. <laughs> you know, one of the reasons it, I think we've seen a suffering of our family structure in the U.S. is because a lot of men don't step up to be the man of the house that they're supposed to be. But a man whose head is always Christ. One who leads, but leads by following Christ. You know, when husbands, fathers, don't make it a priority to lead their families in serving Christ, then that means that our children usually look up to them. And it's actually been proven that the majority of the time if a husband comes to the Christ first and leads his family in that, in following Christ, then more of the families are saved. If it's a child... You know, they can sometimes lead their parents to Christ. A wife, mother, they can do everything they can. Teach their children. But it's not the same. You know, children look up to their fathers. And we have these two extremes. And neither one of them has been working. You know what he's saying here? I mean, relationships matter. You know, husbands and wives are supposed to be a team. They're in it together. But, you know, the husband, you know, they, they love each other. They support each other. You know, the husband doesn't need to be afraid to stand up and, you know, help lead the family. You know, we don't have to be this example of toxic masculinity. But we can stand up and be the men that God has called us to be and say that we are going to lead our families in serving Christ and love our families. Be, you know, kind of laissez-faire about everything, you know, well, just kind of do what we got to do, go to work. If we, t if we put food on the table, this or that, then, you know, we're good. No, we need to stand up and be the men our, our families need. And we need to show them the love of Christ. Mother Teresa said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And we need to do that, men. We need to love our wives the way Christ loved us the way Christ loved the church. You know, we need to be telling her that she's beautiful. We need to be supporting her in the things that she wants to do. Taking care of her. Giving. Not expecting her to do everything. That's important. That's extremely important in our families. You know, and then he, he goes home. You know, he talks about children and parents and, you know, children, do what your parents tell you. You know, as children, we need to listen to the wisdom of our elders, our parents and, and others who have come before. We need to listen to their wisdom, not think that we know it all. Because when we think that we know it all, that's exactly when we get in trouble. And as the church, when we stop looking to the wisdom of the past and think that we know better, because we got modern science, we got this or that, then we start running into trouble. But in, in home, we need, you know, parents need to love their children. Just take them by the hand and guide them in the ways of Christ. Not rule with an iron fist. When you rule in an iron fist, first thing that child's going to do when they get the chance is they're going to rebel against it.
they're either going to run or they're going to stand up and fight. Neither one's good. So we need to love them. Let you, you know, create confidence. And let our children know they can trust us. You know, and he talks about masters and slaves and you know, not, in their time it was not like what the slavery and stuff that we think about. But again, he, he tries to remind them that you know that we're serving Christ. And we need to we need to remember that. Treat everybody the way Christ treated us. Yeah, and you know, it's all about becoming more and more who Christ would have us to be. It's not about a list of do's and don'ts. You know, if you start thinking about how can you love your wife better? How can you love your children better? Or your parents? And compare the way you love them now to the way Christ loves us. It'll make a big difference. You know, when, when we tr think about loving our ch our children, our parents, our spouses, you know, we, yeah, there might be some things that we can think about. We need to do this. We need to do this for them. But if you go by that, you're just going to end up resenting them, thinking you got to do all this to make them happy. But if you focus on loving them, loving them with all you've got, with all your heart, the way Christ loved us, willing to lay down your life for them. It'll make all the difference. You know, our relationships, all of our relationships matter. The relationships that we have with the people that we run into on the street that we'll never see again matter. But the most important are relationships that start right there at home. If we want to change the world, we need to go home and love our families. We want to change the world. Let's go home and love our families. And I know right now we've been at home with our families a lot. And maybe we've been getting frustrated. You know, maybe they, they start irritating us a little bit more and a little bit more, you know, each day. Or maybe we've taken the opportunity to appreciate the time with them. You know, take this time and really love them to be with them, let them know how much we love them, how much we, you know, that they can trust in us. Building them up. I really hope, you know, that we take time to really think about how Christ loved us. And then try to be more like that in the way we love others. When I have my family, that's how I want to be. And that's the way I want to be with the family I already have. The way we all need to be. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, Lord, we Lord, we know that we fail in so many ways. Lord, when we try to do this and try to do that or not do this, not do that, we're always going to fail. But Lord, help us to focus on loving you and then loving others the way you love us. Lord, especially right at home. Because when we have a strong family, that builds strong communities and strong nation. Lord, help us to love our families the way you've loved us. As husbands, as wives, as children, as parents. Lord, let us love with all we have. 
using you as our example, our guide. And we know it will change the world if we do. Thank you, Lord. Give us your grace for this day and each and each and every single day. Amen. May God pour out his grace upon you and bless you in mighty ways this day and every day. Amen.